ID. What is uh, intellectual disability? Welcome back. Thank you. ID, intellectual disability, uh, full form of intellectual disability, intellectual uh, and developmental disability. So there are three parts of it. One is the child's cognition. It is cognition or IQ, intellectual functioning, must be below 70. Hello beings and welcome back to my channel A to Z Therapy with Smriti. I'm Smriti Sikta Mishra, your host and an Indian OT student and I'm back with a bang on video on ID. Yes, intellectual disability with Mr. Durga Prashant Mishra. And uh, starting out with uh, what is ID? What is uh, intellectual disability? Welcome back. Thank you. ID, intellectual disability, uh, full form of the intellectual disability, intellectual uh, and developmental disability. So there are three parts of it. One is the child's cognition. It is cognition or IQ, intellectual functioning, must be below 70. The second part of it is the adaptive functioning, means day-to-day -day life functioning. There must be limitation in the day-to-day -day life functioning, like dressing, eating, self-care, uh, practical intelligence, or area of a conceptual, area of social, and area of practical. These three areas are vital for adaptive functioning. And the last is the which happens in the developmental period, means birth to uh, 18 years. So when we these three things are met, so we see the child has developmental, uh, intellectual and developmental disability. Okay. okay. So um, in the like these things are uh, diagnosed once they are tested and everything out. But how can a parent uh, actually guess it out that okay maybe their child uh, can may have ID and what are the early signs and symptoms that you know the child may have? so that the parent can have an idea that okay maybe we need to look for a, a pediatrician or maybe we need to take our child to a to a expert to check it out what is actually happening with our child yes that's very very important for parents to know about it so when uh, we see a child with id we do not diagnose initially uh, intellectual disability so parents can see a general delay in the developmental milestones when the child is not reaching the milestones on appropriate time as as a norm so there must be a doubt in the parent's mind not if there is some problem with the child he is not reaching likewise we see so there are multi uh, factors or there are multiple uh, red flags one what we say if the child is at risk what we see at risk a uh, low birth weight or uh, the child has delayed birth cry uh, there is some uh, uh, genetic issues with the child which can be diagnosed before the birth also. So if those children are there, so definitely there will be high chances that the child will develop late or their developmental milestones will not be properly reached. So that is the first point of doubt in that should come in the parent's mind. Or the doctor who is seeing or who is the parents who is consulting the doctor, the doctor are also saying that the child is not reaching milestones properly like physical milestones. Physical milestones are the first uh, milestones which can be seen. So not sitting at one place, uh, not sitting properly on time, crawling, walking, uh, knee, there are a lot of milestones are there. Neck control, grace, grasp, grasp, grip. So running, all these milestones has to be reached by one year of your life. If the child is not walking at one year, not giving eye contact or not, uh, uh, understanding when he is asked to do something, when he is not waving bye bye, so when he is not uh, responding to sound, when he is not looking at the person, when he is the mother is going out, he is not able to understand. So there are a lot of milestones, a lot of red flags which we can see in the early part of life. Okay. So that should prompt the parent if there is some issues with the a child that definitely we should consult a pediatrician first because the, that is the first point of contact what we say mm -hmm. if the pediatrician can guide them properly then they can reach uh, at the proper place and they can take the early intervention services okay so uh, what are the types of diagnosis uh, for i and 
the condition and uh, uh, what's the you know the whole process is like from diagnosis to then you know there is a denial that comes up to parents that how can this happen to my child so you know what's the process is like see usually what i have been seeing in whole of my career is when the child's delay when the development milestones are severely delayed or moderately moderately delayed so they immediately without anybody's uh, uh, suggestions they consult the therapist now it is what is happening so when the child is not able to walk so there comes the role of the physiotherapist so why the child is not walking whether uh, the child has some neurological issues or any other issues or syndromic issues or uh, weakness or tone what is the problem so that can be diagnosed by the neurologist and the physiotherapist can also take care of it so for that matter the it is a multidisciplinary team has to work with uh, for a diagnosis so when the child comes to us with presenting neurological issues definitely will refer to a neurologist or pediatric neurologist or a pediatrician or a psychiatrist so to do the proper follow up for the diagnosis because id comes with a lot of comorbidities so usually when we see children with developmental and uh, Uh, intellectual disability we see lot of comorbid situations also yeah. present with them it is not purely id there will be ct cerebral palsy plus id there will be autism plus id because we have seen of uh, minimum 40% of the children with id they have autism or uh, we have seen the 70% of the children with autism they have id so vice versa so uh, what do we see in usually in this uh, diagnosis because it's a multidisciplinary process so when we see id it is not the only iq only intelligence is going to measure before it was before iq was a deciding factor mm-hmm. but the dsm5 has deleted all those iq is not a dsm uh, is not the criteria we have to see the adaptive functioning mm-hmm. adaptive functioning is more important because i am just sharing a case which i have seen uh, long back uh, just 5 uh, to 7 years back i saw a child with uh, uh, down syndrome whose iq was 80 okay whose intelligence was 80 mm-hmm. so nobody can believe it because usually we have learned the children with uh, uh, down, down syndrome they should be mild huh? yeah so intellectual disability is should be mild but no but it is not the criteria of iq it must be the adaptive functioning which is more important mm. as the child had lot of limitations in the adaptive functioning so in that case also dsm says that we can also diagnose the child having id okay because as is a syndromic case mm. so always a diagnosis is a very critical process it is not easy it is a very tedious long term process and it's a multidisciplinary process because there are a lot of in ids what do we see there are a lot of factors there are a lot of neurological base or uh, because and there are a lot of neurological syndromes which uh, needs a multidisciplinary therapy or multidisciplinary professionals for a diagnostic uh, compliance thanks for watching If you like this video do give it a thumbs up share with your friends subscribe to the channel